All right, Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praises and all glory to Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and taught us this truth. They are the true teachers for the nation of Israel on earth today. And citation to the Akim out there pushing this truth and sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth and risking their life for Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai's sake. We're the brothers from GMS Miami. I'm Brother Samak. I'm your brother Zakaria. Yeah, in today's topic, we're going to go into the uh, back to the basics. Mm -hmm. We're going to go into um, Cornelius, all right? Uh, because, you know, you still got uh, these plantation Christians and even um, our own people that really think Cornelius is a so-called white man. Right. And that's a lie. You know, Cornelius is an Israelite. Mm -hmm. And we're going to uh, bring out um, some uh, the scriptures, okay, some precepts. Right. As well as some articles to prove that uh, Cornelius is an Israelite. And um, to give credit where credit is due, all right, it was the apostles of Great Millstone, okay, that broke down that Cornelius is an Israelite and he's not an Edomite. That's right. All right. And even uh, Bishop Nathaniel, he admitted that, mm -hmm. all right, he gave credit where credit is due, that it was Apostle Tahar and I believe Apostle Gabar yeah. that uh, broke down, all right, Acts the 10th chapter the right way, um, saying that no, Cr Cornelius is an Israelite, yep. okay? And um, the reason why Acts the 10th chapter had to play out the way it did because this is now um, the acceptance of the Israelite foreigners, those Gentiles that are scattered among the nations that were in those Gentile state of mind, mm -hmm. all right? Cornelius, all right, was being accepted back in, all right, into the fold, mm -hmm. all right, building up the tabernacles of David, That's right. all right, the 12 tribes. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna get into, we're gonna take our time and you know, low wellness, less edifying for the sincere Akim and Akwaf. This is, um, you know, this is this is why you know this book is for Israelites. That's right. And and breaking down Acts chapter ten the correct way, man, is just it builds you. It, it it's really uplifting because it's like a man. You know, the Lord's only dealing to Israelites and those that believe in Yahweh Bashmi Al are going to be ones to be saved that are from Israel. That's right. You know. Yep. So start at Acts Cut. chapter 10. This is the book of Acts chapter 10 in verse 1. It says, There was a certain man of Caesarea called Cornelius, a satirian, a satirian of the band called the called the Italian band. Right. Okay. So at this point, you know, you got a lot of these wacky tacky uh, plantation Christians and um, bugged out Jakes. I'll say, oh, see, it says he was the Italian band. So he's a so-called white man. He's Italian. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, incorrect. All right, we're going to uh, get uh, the book of Acts chapter 18, verse 2, brother. Mm -hmm. This is the book of uh, Acts chapter 18. I'll, I'll start at verse 1. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 18, verse 1, it says, After these things, Paul departed from Athens and mm -hmm. came to Corinth. Verse 2, it says, And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come to come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, uh, Priscilla because that Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. Right. So that there's the point. Mm -hmm. Okay. There were Jews in Rome. Okay. You yep. had Israelites in Rome. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that cuts that nonsense. Like, all right, that, oh, uh, he, he's from the Italian band, so he, he must be an Edomite. No. You had, you had different nations in Rome, all right, especially uh, Israelites that were dwelling in Rome, living in Rome. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you got some? Real quick. Come. This book of Hebrews chapter thirteen and verse twenty-four. It says, "Salute all them that have the rule over you. To all the saints, they of Italy salute you." And we know who the saints are: the Israelites, man. Mm -hmm. So he said that all those. He says, "Uh, all so like they of Italy salute you." So there mm -hmm. was Israelites, the saints in uh, uh Rome, right? Uh, Italy, right? And what were they doing? Preaching the gospel. All right, preaching the good news. That's the reason why. The Caesar Augustus kicked them out because, mm -hmm. hey, J Jake was raising hell, yep. you know, saying, hey, man, you need to repent. Come uh, seek Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. The, uh, he's, he's the one that's going to be able to uh, deliver you from your sins. That's right. All right. And, hey, that was causing a lot of ruckus in Rome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so uh, read again uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 1. Come on. This is the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 1. It says, mm -hmm. There was a certain man of Caesarea mm -hmm. called Cornelius, a mm -hmm. centurion of the band called the Italian band. All right. So now I, what I have here is from the BBC. Uh, you can look this up. It says the Roman army. Who was in the Roman army? Only men could be in the Roman army. No women. 
Every Roman soldier was a Roman citizen. He had to be at least 20 years old. He was not supposed to get married while he was a soldier. Most soldiers in the Roman Empire came from countries outside Italy. There, there, there were Roman soldiers from Africa, France, Germany, the Balkans, Spain, and the Middle East. Mm -hmm. All right? So, hey, the Roman Empire always recruited different nations, yeah. okay, into their military, especially when they conquered them. Yeah. Okay? And Judea was a, was a providence to, to, uh, uh, to Rome. All right, and you had certain Jews that know they were Jews that were in the Roman army. All right, just to edify that point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Tiberius Julius Alexander, the Jew who destroyed Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, I'll just get to the point. Titus, chief of staff in his campa campaign to conquer and raid Jerusalem in 70 AD, was born a Jew. His name was Tiberius Julius Alexander, and he was the scion of one of the most important Jewish families. In, in the ancient world. His uncle was Philo, a communal leader of the Jews of Alexandria. Right, you had Jews in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And the first prominent philosopher in Jew, in Jew history. His father, Marcus, is an important Alexandria official under the Roman administration. Right, he worked for Ro mm -hmm. under Rome. And was famed for his gift of, of gilded gates to the Jerusalem temple. His brother had married into the, into the Jew royal family in Judea. While he did not officially convert to paganism, Simply by fighting in the Roman army and participating in the Roman administration of the ancient world, he cut his ties with the with the with the Israelite roots. Yep. All right. So yeah, you had mm -hmm. uh, those that knew they were Jews in the Roman army in the Roman army, and then you had okay Israelite foreigners that were in the Roman army, and then when they heard the words okay this gospel, they were like, oh man, yep. this is talking about me. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, um. I want to get net.bible because it says, and you can look this up, it says Army Roman, Army of uh, the Roman Army. It says organization. There were originally no standing forces, but the citizens performed military, uh, military service like any other civic duty. The citizens, all right, like any other duty when summoned by the magistrates, all right. The, the gradual deployment of military profession and standing army cult culminated in the admission of the poorest class to the ranks of Marius, all right? And that goes to show you that the Roman army always recruited people from the poor, mm -hmm. okay, districts. Just like today, yep. you have the recruiters okay. always going to the, the so-called Negro, Latino, Native American community, yep. all right, to recruit them into the military. And their schools and shit. Right, mm -hmm. all right? Nothing new on the sun, okay? Um... Henceforth, the Roman army was made up of a body of men who char with, whose character was essentially that of mercenaries and whose terms of continuous service varied in different divisions from 16 to 26 years. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, it says the Roman, the, the forces which, the, which composed the Roman army under the empire may be divided into the following five groups. The imperial guard and garrison of the capital, the legions, the auxilia, which that's where uh, Cornelius was in, in that division. The Italian man was out of that division. Mm -hmm. The Nomeri and the fleet, which shall discuss their organization or to mention. I'm just going to get to the auxilia. The auxilia were organized as infantry in cohorts. That, in cohorts. Okay, that's where uh, you get the, when you go into, um, into that verse. He, he was a, co a cohort, and I believe when you go into that word cohorts, I'm just going to look it up. It means the cores or bania of ancient were created by Augustus to counterbalance the enormous power of the Praetorian Guard in the city of Rome and serve as a police service. Mm -hmm. And that's what Cornelius was, as a police service. Right. Okay? Just like today, they got Jakes in ed, as cops mm -hmm. in the ghettos and the barrios, man. Yep. Yep. Okay? You see it all the time. You see it all the time. Um, let's, I just missed my spot. Just right here. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it, then it said, in here, it said, uh, as cavalry and LA, or as mixed bodies, cohorts, equilite, some of these divisions contain approximately 1,000 men, but the greater number, about 500. They were commanded by Trubani and Perfecti of, uh, 
equestrian rank, the importance of auxilia consisted originally in the diversity of their equipment and manner of fighting. Since each group adhered to the customs of the nations in whose midst it had been recruited, innate. So there you go. That's according to that article. Mm -hmm. So they were recruiting from different nations, yep. including uh, 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 even those that knew that they were Jews. Mm -hmm. Okay. But with the gradual Romanization of the empire, they were assimilated more and more to the character of, of the legionnaires. Okay. Recruiting system. This is what I wanted to find. In accordance with arrangements of Augustus, the cohorts Portrera and cohorts Orbain were recruited from Latim, Eteroia, Umbria, and the older Roman colonies, uh, the legions from remaining portions of Italy, and the exilia from the subject of communities of the empire. But in the course of time, the natives of Italy disappeared, first, first from the legions and later from the garrison of the capital. Antonius Plus established that the rule that each body of troops should draw its recruits from the district where it was stationed. Henceforth, the previous possession of, of Roman citizenship was no longer required for enlistment in the legions. The legionary was granted the privilege of citizenship upon entering the service. Mm -hmm. Now, that may, wouldn't make sense if Cornelius is being raised in Greek fashion all right, because I believe when you go into uh, Caesarea, it said there was a lot of Greeks there, but there was other nations in there. Yeah. All right, you know he was, but now who's the who's the ruling empire at Rome? Yeah. So he's like, man, I gotta, you know, I want to be a Roman citizen, so I get the privileges. Yeah. All right, so let me join the Roman uh, military. Mm -hmm. okay? okay, so I just wanted to bring that out. All right, um, just to show that hey, Cornelius. Okay, uh, was was an Israelite. Okay, um, in the military, and um, and when you go, well, we're going to go into Acts chapter ten. Is how he uh, he um, he found favor of the Lord because he heard the word, he saw the prophets teaching, and he believed, and he was like, "Yo, I'm a, we're going to go into it." Yeah, okay. You know, I got a precept. Mm -hmm. This is the book of. Um... And hold that one day. All right, come on. I got two of them. Because mm -hmm. our people, you know, they was they was going after the ways of the Greeks, which the Greeks was the Edomites, and then eventually they they became the Romans. And our people, you know, they always made agreements with them, like like you said with mm -hmm. uh, uh, Alexander. Yep. You know, this uh First Maccabees chapter one in verse uh First Maccabees chapter one, in verse uh eleven, it says, "In those days, uh, went there out of Israel wicked men." who persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. Mm -hmm. For since we departed from them, we have had, it's like we have had much sorrow. So that was our wicked men. You know, they was making covenants with, with uh, uh, the Greeks. All right. And there was nothing different when the Roman Empire, man. Mm -hmm. It says, verse 12, it says, so this device pleased them well. Uh, verse 13 it says, then certain of the people were so forward therein, that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinance of the heathens. Mm -hmm. All right. And it goes into how our people, you know, they was going into the Greek philosophies, you know, going in gymnasium and stuff like that. Because our people, you know, they they, were, they became Hellenized. All right. Mm -hmm. I got another one mm -hmm. on how it wasn't lawful for, us, lawful for us to call ourselves Jews. Yeah. You know. What is that? Uh, Second yeah, Maccabees, Maccabees chapter six, verse six. Okay. okay. No, you got it. You got it. Okay. Cool. I wrote it down as a note. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's spirit. This is the book of Second Maccabees, chapter six, in verse. Uh, I'm sorry, verse four. It says, "For the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles, meaning the, the other nations." Mm -hmm. It says, "Who dallied with harlots and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places, and besides that, that brought in these things that were not lawful." Mm -hmm. Verse five says, "The altar." The altar also was filled with profane things which the law forbidden. Verse 6. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts, nor to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So he so he couldn't confess himself at all to be a Jew. What did they call it? What was our people calling themselves? Greeks? Yep. You know? Greeks. And then prior prior to that, you had uh Northern Kingdom. Yep. All right, they got removed out of that land. Okay. And not all, you know, the bulk of Northern Kingdom, yeah, they came over to the other side of the world, but you still had, okay, scattered uh, Northern Kingdom in that region too. Yep. And over a process, a process of time, they lost their identity, they lost their heritage, and we're going to go into that, yep. you know. Uh, but I want to bring out one more, uh, the NLT, and then we're going to go to verse 2. And uh, just this will hit it home. 
So this is the NLT version of Acts chapter 10, verse 1. It says, in Caesarea, there lived a Roman army officer named Cornelius, mm -hmm. who was a captain of the Italian regiment. So even the NLT version got that right, man. NLT version of certain script, man, they be giving them <laughs> uppercut yeah, yeah. punches, all right? And really just breaking you plantation Christians down because what you're teaching is, is, is lies, man. Um... And, oh, by the way, just to uh, speak uh, uh, for myself, I was in the American Army, okay? I was in the American Army. I wore the American uh, fatigue, but guess what? I was calling myself, okay, a so-called Puerto Rican, Yeah. all right? Just come on now. <laughs> yeah. Make it make sense. Americanized. Americanized, right? Call, still, but saying, I, I come from Puerto yeah, Rico, yeah, yeah. If you're right? Just say you got... Uh, 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 certain um, jakes that are like, oh yeah, I'm I'm, I'm Mexican yeah. or I'm Dominican or I'm I'm Jamaican, right? But still in the American yeah. army. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Mm -hmm. Like, this is Rome all over again. This is the image of the beast. Yeah, coming back. Coming back. Yeah. Yep. When was Hitler? I got a precept mm -hmm. on how all Northern Kingdom. All right, there was well, there was certain Northern Kingdom that stayed uh, that was in the land. Mm -hmm. This is Luke chapter two and verse thirty six says, oh, and good. there was. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of uh, Phanel, if I'm saying it right, says, of the tribe of Asher. She was of, of a great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. So she was from the tribe of Asher. The tribe mm -hmm. of Asher are you so called uh, Colombians, like to Uruguay, and like Brazilians down there in South America. So mm -hmm. she was, she was uh, the Northern Kingdom left, all right? So that meaning all the tribes didn't leave. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. But well, well, a lot of the northern kingdom, but you still had a little it left in the land. Right, that's right. Because yeah. hey, that's it, the prophecy had to be fulfilled. We'll be scattered among the nations. Yep. Okay, all twelve tribes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, verse two. Yeah, let's go to two now. Con, this is book of Acts chapter ten and verse two. It says, uh, "I read verse one again." It says, "There was a certain man of Caesarea called Cornelius, a a uh, centurion of the band called the Italian band." Mm -hmm. Verse two. A devout man and one that feared Yahweh with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to the Most High always. Right. That cut. That proves that he's an Israelite. Yeah. Okay. All right. He was a devout man. Okay. Uh. What? What? Um. You Acts two and five. Mm -hmm. That's one of your favorite scriptures, mm -hmm. Zakari. You always bring that out. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, I'm gonna get um. Sirach. You got. You got. You got. I got. You got, I got. Come, this is book of Acts chapter two and verse five. It says, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. So it's, they were de devout men, meaning devout meaning like they dedicated their life to the Lord. And the Jews out of every nation because our people were scattered throughout the nations, man. Mm -hmm. Verse 6 says, now when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in their own language. So the point was... Hey, the, uh, there was men at Jerusalem, devout men out of every out of out of every nation, man. Mm -hmm. All right, that was it. Yeah, I'm gonna get uh, the book of Sirach. Uh Read that. Read uh, verse two one more time. Uh, mm -hmm. This book of Acts chapter two and verse five. It says, "And there were dwelling at Jerusalem uh, Jews, mm -hmm. devout men out of every nation under heaven." Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, read. Uh, I'm sorry. I can bring uh, Acts chapter. 10, uh, 10 verse 2, okay, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Look at mm -hmm. Acts chapter 10, verse 2. It says, A devout man and one that feared Yahweh mm -hmm. with all his house, which gave much alms to the people mm -hmm. and prayed to the Most High always. Right. So now let's bring out the book of Sirach, chapter 17 and 22. And it says, The alms of a man is as a signet with him, mm -hmm. and he will keep the good deeds of man. As the apple of the eye and give repentance to his sons and daughters. So yeah, man. Okay. Cornelius, it was a devout man. Okay. And he prayed to the Lord. Okay. And he gave alms to the people, man. Yeah. All right. That proves that he's an Israelite. And that proves that he, he was, and who was he giving alms to? All right. The circumcision. Okay. Because yeah. he believed, he believed what they, the message that they were, uh, were, uh, were, were, uh, prophesying yeah. about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, kind of got, got. And that's it. important. That's why, hey man, you gotta give alms, man. If you want the Lord to to hear your your prayers, man, you gotta be uh, giving alms. You gotta be praying. Okay, just do exactly what our forefathers are doing, man. Right. You know. Yeah, he found favor with the Lord. Right. Yep. Kind of. This is a. 
uh, I'll read verse um, Acts chapter 10 and verse 2. It says, a devout man and one that feared the Most High. Mm -hmm. That's how you know he Israel because because he feared the Lord. These Edomites, they don't fear the Lord, man. It says, a devout man and one that feared the Most High with all his house and gave much alms to the people and prayed to Yahweh Bashim Shai always. So I got a precept on, on devout. Mm -hmm. This is the book of Luke chapter 2 and verse 33. Uh, not so like verse uh, 25 Luke chapter 2 and verse 25 says and behold there was a man in Jerusalem who name was Simon and the same man was just and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him so he was the, he was devout mm -hmm. right he was an Israelite that was devout and so that's me you know that the, the devout people are Israelites man right it wasn't no other nations because they don't they don't they don't care about the Lord, man. Right, and waiting for the consolation of Israel. Right, <laughs> waiting for the Messiah to, uh, all right, to uh, uh, help save Israel, man. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that's what he was wanted. He wanted the, the kingdom of heaven, man. All right, this this Bible is is exclusive for the Israelites that's it. and them remembering themselves. So we're gonna go back to the Book of Acts again. Okay, come on, I got one more mm -hmm. Bible shot. This is Book of Psalm, chapter thirty-six and verse one. It says, the transgression of the wicked saith within my heart, there is no fear of the Most High before his eyes. And that's mm -hmm. how the wicked thinks. Like, what? who is the Lord that we should serve him? Right. You know? They, they, they uh, yeah, they don't seek the Lord, man. They're the wicked. Mm -hmm. You got it, brother. All right, so we're going to go. Yeah, you go. You got okay. it. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 10 and verse 2 again says, A devout man and one that feared Yahweh Bashi mm -hmm. with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to the Most High always. Mm -hmm. Verse 3 says, he saw, verse 3 says, he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day mm -hmm. an angel of the Most High coming into him mm -hmm. and saying unto him, Cornelius, verse th verse 4 says, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is, what is it, Lord? Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before Yahweh. Right. Okay. And the Lord remembered him. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got a, a precept. The book of Acts, chapter 10, all right, and uh, verse 22. And they said, Cornelius, all right, uh, the centurion, a just man, and one that feared God, and of a good report among all the nation of the Jews, mm -hmm. right? He had a good report among all the nation of the Jews because of his, what giving alms, helping them out, okay? was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. All right, this is when he was going to speak it to Peter. Oh. All right, I just wanted to bring that out. He was a just man. Yeah. And that's another thing. Though, uh, uh, the just are the Israelites. The just shall live by faith. Those are the Israelites. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so I wanted to bring that out because, hey, that's why the Lord rem remembered, okay, Cornelius, and, and heard his prayers. And, and this was the beginning of now Israelite foreigners coming back all right, to the full, coming back to their heritage, their culture, to the understanding, okay, uh, and the belief in Yahweh Shai, okay, because yep. that was the whole point, all right, because, hey, that, the you know, when Jake hears rumors, man, it spreads, they're like, yeah, yo, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Messiah died on the cross for, for the sins of his people, mm -hmm. and, and, hey, man, people were taking, were he taking a heed to that. Yep, mm -hmm. the rumors spread. Mm -hmm. I got a couple precepts. Mm -hmm. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 28, in verse 9, it says, He turneth away his ear. So, uh, Proverbs 28 and 9, it says, He turneth away his ear from the hearing the law, even his prayer are an abomination. Mm -hmm. All right. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. So, the Lord, you know, uh, uh, Cornelius was a righteous man, so the Lord heard his prayers. Mm -hmm. And the, what the scriptures talk about how Raphael, the, the angel, you know, uh, takes our prayers and give them up to the Most High. This, the prayers of the saints. Right. This is the book of Revelation chapter 8 and verse um, 8 and verse 3. Yeah, Revelation chapter 8 and verse 3. It says, Another angel came and stood stood at the altar having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he shall offer it with the prayers of all, saint, all mm -hmm. saints mm -hmm. upon the golden altar which were before the throne. Man. Mm -hmm. So the prayers of the saints, the Israelites, man. Right. The Lord said, because the angel said, The Lord had heard thy prayers, man. Mm -hmm. You know, that's right. Yep. So, uh, Acts chapter 10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And verse four says, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, thy prayers and thy arms are come up for a memorial before Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Verse five, it says, and now send men to Joppa 
and called for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Verse 6 says, And he lodged with one Simon the tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Mm -hmm. Verse 7 says, And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and devout soldiers, as a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. Mm -hmm. So the soldier, he was devout too. That's right. Verse 8, it says, And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. Mm -hmm. and, and the Lord told uh, told, the, told the disciples, Go not in the ways of the Gentiles. Go mm -hmm. right to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Verse 9, it says, on the, mower, on the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop and prayed about the sixth hour. Mm -hmm. Verse 10, it says, And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. All right, so he received, he's receiving a vision now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse 11 says, And saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending unto, unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. All right, okay, so this right here, okay, this is this is uh, very important important because hey uh he saw he's seeing a vision he saw a certain vessel descending onto him as at a great uh sheet knee at the house at the four corners and let down to the earth if you get hosea Sorry. eight and eight i believe yeah, yeah hosea eight and eight because what's that vessel talking about all right and this is how you know this is bringing back the northern kingdom yep. all right all the israelite tribes are now coming back man okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the book of Hosea, chapter 8, and verse 8. Mm -hmm. It says, Israel is swallowed up. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles mm -hmm. as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, because, hey, that was it, man. Um, that was part of the, the curses, mm -hmm. that we will be scattered among the Gentiles. I got a precept. Uh, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, and verse 26. I said... I will scatter them into corners. Mm -hmm. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Yep. All right. So that, uh, what the, the vision that uh, Peter saw, okay, uh, was uh, represented um, men. Okay. Uh, mainly, uh, it's really talking about the uh, the, the uh, Israelite foreigners, man, the, mm -hmm. the unclean men. All right. That were stuck in that Gentile state of mind. Yep. But they were, still, they were still Israelites. And now this is the time to, uh, and that's why, this had to play out because now it's time for all the tribes to come back. Mm -hmm. All right? Yep. Mm -hmm. I got one. Mm -hmm. This is book of Tobit, chapter 13, and verse 3. It says, Confess him before the Gentiles, mm -hmm. ye children of Israel, for he hath scattered us among them. Mm -hmm. You know, so our people were scattered. Uh, basically, uh, Peter saw that, that knit throughout the four corners of the earth, like the brothers wanted to, how. Our people was, is scattered throughout the earth, man. Mm -hmm. Throughout the four corners of the earth. Mm -hmm. That's why the Lord said He gonna gather the elect from the four corners of the earth. Right. You know? uh, right. So that's what uh, you know. That what the uh, symbolism, the representation was. All right. Um, continue on twelve. Verse twelve. Mm -hmm. uh, Acts chapter ten, verse twelve. It says, "Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air." Right. This represents unclean men. Okay, uh, oh, oh, if you go to um, what's that? What's that scripture? Because I, I know Elder Yashawama, he 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 brought it out. It was in Ezekiel. Um, Our people was praying, praying to all these yeah, eight, yeah, yeah, Ezekiel eight, yeah, mm, eight and um, I wrote it down in, in, in these notes. I'm just trying to, there's like idols of uh, beasts and Ezekiel people. eight, nine, and ten. Here it is. Mm -hmm. Kind of, I'll start it okay. Mm -hmm. I'll start a little bit up. This book of Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse... Um, uh, I'll start at verse 5. Mm -hmm. I'll read through it fast. Ezekiel 8 and 5 says, Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thy eyes now the way towards the north. So I lifted up my eyes in the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entrance. Verse mm -hmm. 6. He said furthermore unto me, Son of man, see his... Seest thou what they do, even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here, uh, that I should go far off from my sanctuary? Keep a uh, house of Israel. Yeah. See, the northern kingdom. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why they got taken out of the land 
okay, out of the Holy Land first, yep. all right, because they were into abominations, into idol worship. Ephraim is joined to idols, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, let him alone. Let him alone, yeah. You know? Uh -huh. yep. And that's why the Lord said, if you join into these idols, you, you start learning the ways of heathens, he's going to kick us out. Of the right. Land, you're man. not a people anymore. Yep. You're not, uh, that's why he told Hosea to go uh, get the prostitute and yeah. bear children with her. All right. That symbolizes, all right, uh, uh, Israel's uh, whoredom. whoredom. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Ezekiel 8 and verse 16, 6. So like Ezekiel 8 and 6. So like it says, he said, furthermore unto me, son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary. But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. Verse 7, And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. So the Lord is showing Ezekiel the abominations with these, with these wicked jakes is doing. Verse 8, it says, Then he said unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall, and when I had dig in the wall, behold, a door. And he, verse 9, it says, And he said unto me, Go in, and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. Verse 10, mm -hmm. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things, in the abominable beast, and uh, in the, all the idols of the house of Israel, portrayed portrayed upon the wall round about. Mm -hmm. Verse 11, it says, And there stood before them seventy men of the ancient, seven men of, of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood Zana uh, and the son of uh, Saphran, uh, with every man in his censer in his hand, in a thick cloud of incense went up. So right. the point was that they seen every all these abominations and creeping things. Right. All right. So they were worshiping these idols. All right, and they were uh, like beasts, like animals. Yeah. Because all right, that, that's heathen stuff. Heathens are are a bunch of beasts and animals, not the Israelites. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's what they were doing. So that's why the uh, the Lord had uh, given that vision to Peter about the four-footed beasts and the wild beasts uh, that represented okay unclean israelite men mm -hmm. okay yep. women right. children mm -hmm. okay i got precept for mm -hmm. you because they was worshiping these idols they was worshiping the idols of beasts and stuff like that so they became like unto them mm -hmm. this book of uh, psalm chapter 115 and verse 4 says their idols are silver and gold the work of man's hand they have mouths but they speak not the eyes have they but they see not they have ears but they hear not noses they have but they smell not verse 7 they have hands but they handle not uh, feet they have but they uh, walk not neither speak uh, they through their throat versus this is the point verse 8 says they make them sorry, they that make them are like unto them so is everyone that trusts in them so our people they was worshiping them either so you became like unto them man mm -hmm. all right our people you know they beast animals look at it look at jakey in the streets man I look how they treat each other, you know. Look, look at their lifestyle, like fucking like wild animals, man. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's why uh, it was imperative for Peter to preach this gospel, man, of Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. All right, so that it's the, the time to wake up our, our our people that are in that in that Gentile state of mind to get out of that. You're an Israelite. It's time to come back to home, man. It's mm -hmm. time to come back through Yahweh Shai. All right, and um, and get, have your sins uh, be forgiven, so you could be delivered, be saved, and that's what we're doing. Cause we were all Gentiles, we yeah. were all uh, in a heathen fashion, okay. Mm -hmm. And then when we heard this word, we woke up. We, we're Cornelius is us. Yep. This is our story, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Got a couple mm -hmm. more if you have none. God, uh, you want to get one? We were gonna. No, let me see. Uh, uh oh, I was gonna. No, no, no. You got okay. you got one more. Going, you can going bring up going in these beasts. Mm -hmm. Our people became like beasts. This is mm -hmm. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 21. It says, Yet I have planted thee a noble vine, holy a so holy a right seed. Talking mm -hmm. about our people. Now, so like, how then art thou turned into the gener into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me, man? Meaning like unknown, unfamiliar. Our people, we're supposed to be a noble vine. Now that now our people like a, a, a abominable, you know, right. a, a, a unfamiliar a vine, you know. Right. And that's how it was <laughs> back in the ancient world. You had the circumcision, they're like, ew, I don't want to deal with these uncircumcision. They're mm -hmm. caught up in their okay, Gentile Greek 
okay, customs and other uh, heathen customs. Like, there was a big division, man. Mm -hmm. And and Peter and Paul came into, all right, nah, all right, we they, these are still our, our brothers and sisters. It's time to wake them up and bring them back, all right. But through Yahweh Shai, which the circumcision, a lot of them didn't want. They didn't like that, yep. all right. And so... Uh, that's why they and they denied Yahweh Shai to begin with, mm -hmm. all right. And that's why Paul uh, said, "Well, you know, we're we're done with you. But now we're going to go to the Gentiles, all right, we'll which were the Israelite foreigners." Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremiah two and verse uh, twenty two it says, "For though thou wash thee with nit uh, nitre, so, and take uh, thee much soap, yet thine iniquity is marked before me," saith the Lord Power. Verse twenty three. How canst thou say I am not polluted? I have not gone at the Balaam. Balaam, see, see thy way in the valley. Know that thou know what thou hast done. Thou art swift. Thou art a swift uh, dormitory, uh, tra tra uh, traversing her ways like it. Verse twenty-four. This point. It says a wild ass used in the uh, wilderness that sniffeth up. The wind at her pleasure and her occasion who can turn her away all that seek her uh, will not weary themselves in her mouth uh, they shall find her so the, our, the Lord said he liked our people to a wild ass man all right that's why the Lord said uh, Ezekiel what too he said uh, our people are like scorpions. Don't we dwell the door? You dwell among scorpions. Tell them where they're here for bear. Right, right. The Lord said he's going to see, he's going to uh, tie the seed of Israel with the seed of beasts because our people going to be like beasts, you know? Right. <laughs> and he also calls us a wild, wild bull mm -hmm. in the streets. In the net. Yeah. In the net. Yeah. In the net. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wild yeah. bull. Yep. Uh, let's go fit, Let's go okay. to uh, Acts 10. Let's get to the part where it says, uh, have cleansed that call okay. not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. This is the book of Acts chapter 10 and verse, uh, I read verse 12 again. It says, mm -hmm. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. Verse 13. And there came a voice to him, uh, rise, Peter, kill and eat. Mm -hmm. Because that's representing, uh, you know, uh, teaching teaching the Israelite foreigners, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, teaching Israel who they, who they were. Verse uh, 14. It says, but Peter said, not so. Uh, not so, Lord, for I am, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Right. This is the man that walked with Yahweh Shai, all right. And after Yahweh Shai's death, okay, uh, he's receiving this vision, and the vision, the you know, the Lord saying, "Hey, man, go kill and eat these wild, um, these wild, uh, these uh, abominable beasts." And he's like, "Yo, I haven't. I don't eat that at all," mm -hmm. which goes to show you that. Okay, uh, uh, Peter uh, kept the dietary laws, man. All right, and and that goes to show this is not talking about eating unclean foods, man. Right. All right, I just want to make yeah, that yeah. point. Yeah, they try to use that, right? Because <laughs> what well, what didn't Yahweh Shai tell him? Oh, it's time to eat unclean food. Yeah, eat and rise. Right? Yahweh Shai died, and and Peter's still saying, no, I ain't eating that unclean food even after Yahweh Shai died. So that's obviously not talking about food, man. Yep. All right. That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, yeah, when Yahweh Shai didn't tell him, didn't say to him, hey, you know, now it's time to eat unclean food. Right. Right? Because then if him saying that, that means he's disobeying the Lord. The Lord. Yep. Come on, man. The Lord say, I came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill. Fulfill, right. Yep. Acts chapter 9 and verse um, 14 says, But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is coming or unclean. Mm -hmm. Verse 15, it says, And the voice spake unto him again the second time. Uh, the second time, uh, what Yahweh have cleansed that so that call not thou coming. Right. So now let me get a precept to that. So this is book of Ezekiel chapter 36 and I'm going to start at 24. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your, your own land. This is talking to the Israelites. Mm -hmm. Verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from yep. all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. God. All right? That's what the Lord was uh, uh, showing Peter. Okay? That, hey, when you start preaching this word, you're going to be waking up, all right, these uh, Israelite foreigners, all right, so that they could be clean, all right, and stop uh, and get away from these idols and come back to me. Yep. All right? Come back to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Yep. All right? And how do you make yourself clean? Through the... Where you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, yeah, yeah. Cut, 
Through the word, right? Yeah, yeah, through the word. Yeah. I got John 15, and that's one in um, mm -hmm. Psalms 119 and 9. Mm -hmm. It's book of Psalms chapter 15 in the verse um, 3. It says, mm -hmm. Now are you clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Right. Yeah, that's how you clean right. by this word. Right. When they heard the word, they're like, Oh, I'm an Israelite. I'm not a Greek. I'm not a, a Scythian. I'm not a barbarian. I'm an Israelite. From okay, from one of my prospective tribes. Mm -hmm. That's why James, Yahweh Shai's brother, said to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, because at that time, okay, he's writing to those that know that they're Israelites mm -hmm. from their prospective tribe. Right. To, I mean, <laughs> right. you know. God, I got one. <laughs> This book of Psalm chapter 119 and verse 9. Wherewith thou shall a young man cleanse his way mm -hmm. by taking heed thereto according to thy word. So this mm -hmm. word cleanses you, man. Mm -hmm. And like the brothers wanted to, Peter gave uh, the word unto uh, uh, Cornelius mm -hmm. and he became clean. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, Acts chapter 10 and verse, um, verse, verse 15 again says, in the voice, so in the voice spake unto him again the second time, what Yahweh have cleansed that call not thou coming. Mm -hmm. And then Job says, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Esau, that you know that's not an Edomite because yeah. Esau, he's that unclean. He can't be made clean, man. Mm -hmm. You know? That's right. <laughs> Verse 16 says, this was done thrice and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Mm -hmm. Verse 17, it says, now while Peter doubted in himself uh, what, th what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men that were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate, verse eighteen, and called and asked whether Simon, which were, uh, which was a surname Peter, were lodged there. Mm -hmm. Verse nine, nineteen says, while Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Right, that's why you had the vision three times, because yeah. there was those three men coming. Mm -hmm. All right, those are the Israelite foreigners. Okay. See, it all it all comes it all comes uh together, man. Right. All right. So now you know, okay, that the 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 story of Cornelius, all right, is him, all right, coming back into the fold, being accepted, mm -hmm. and he believed. It's just that at that at that time, the the uh, Judea, the Jews were like, we ain't dealing with these, okay, uncircumcised, yeah. okay, uh, 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 Gentile state, okay, uh, yeah. Israelite foreigners. We're not dealing with them. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they was just dealing with the, the ones who knew they were Jews. Right. The ones of the circumcision. It's one of the circumcision, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they knew about the history, too, how yeah. people, you know, uh, uh, got kicked out of the land. But they just, they, they they didn't want to accept them, man. Right. Um, Man, what did, didn't they tell you, Howashai, where will he go? Yeah. Uh, what was that in um, the uh, book of John? Will he go among the Gentiles? Gentile to the, you know, to the, and teach the Gentiles? Where is that located at? Um, and you go into that that word diaspora. Yeah. Um, dang. Was this Jen? Mm -hmm. Gentiles. Each. Mm -hmm. John seven uh, thirty five. Thirty five. Oh, yep. There it is. I was <laughs> had my hands on it. <laughs> now, so, sure, yeah. Uh. You got it. You got it, brother. Uh, this book of John, chapter 7, and verse 35, it says, Then said the Jews among themselves, Whether will he go, that we shall find him, shall not find him? Mm -hmm. Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? Mm -hmm. So it was, it was he going to go amongst our, the, the Gentiles to teach the what is like foreigners? Mm -hmm. Right. The, the, go uh, among the Gentiles to teach the Gentiles because yeah. okay again the Israelites are scattered among the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. All right, and so they're in a Gentile state of mind. They need to be come back to the remembrance of who they are. All right, um, and, that, and that and it's all throughout the throughout the history from captivity to, to captivity. Start from the Assyrian ca uh, captivity. All right. To the uh, uh, Syrian, uh, to the Babylonian captivity, to the Persian Mede captivity, to the Greek captivity, to the Roman captivity. All right, our people have uh, been um, losing who they are uh, to the point that a lot of them forgot who they are. Okay, um, did you go into the word dispersed, Disper uh, diaspora? Let me see. You get into that word, and then it like it really s seals the deal with that too. Um, 
I'm gonna bring this out in the KJ in the in the V right quick. Mm-hmm. This is John chapter seven verse thirty five says the Jews said to another, "Where does this man intend to go that we cannot find him? Will he go where our people live, scattered amongst the Greeks, and teach the Greeks?" Oh, <laughs> yeah. read that again. Whoa, yeah. that's it, IV. Yeah. Man, hey, that's a hey, man. That's that spirit's out there to start going into these different translations to mm-hmm. get a better. Uh, to bring out more edification, man. Yeah. yeah, man, that's powerful. Read that again. John 7 and 35 says, The Jews said uh, to another, Where does this man intend to go that we cannot find him? Will he go where our people live, scatter amongst the Greeks, mm-hmm. and teach the Greeks? There you, you go. Know. And um, so They knew our people were scattered. That's right. And when you go into the word um, uh, diaspora, it says, A scattering... A scattering, dispersion, Israelites dispersed among foreign nations, according to exactly what the NLT said. Yep. So yeah, man. All right, this is hey, this is the truth, man. Like yo, the the this is all about Israel and Israel remembering themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay, and especially in these latter days, because we all fell. All right, and now the Lord uh, uh, put the spirit, the Rokah Kodash, uh, uh, starting with our uh, elders and their elders, mm-hmm. Abba Bivens. Okay, and um, preaching who we are, man, who the 12 tribes are, okay? Mm-hmm. And that's how you know we're at the end. Yep. Acts chapter 10 and verse um, verse um, 19 says, While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Verse 20, Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent un- unto him from Cornelius, and said, "Behold, I am he whom ye, sorry, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause whereof ye are come?" Mm-hmm. Verse twenty-two. It says, "And they said, Cornelius the Satyrian, a just man and one that feared the Most High, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, among all the nations of the Jews, mm-hmm. Judea, mm-hmm. okay, was warned from the Most High by a holy uh, by a holy angel to to send." For thee into thy into his house and to hear uh, hear words of thee. Mm-hmm. So his scripture talk about those of a good report. I got a precept. Mm-hmm. You know, because Israelites they had a good report, man. That's right. This book of Acts chapter Acts chapter twenty two and verse ten. It says, yeah, Acts chapter twenty two and verse yeah, I'll start at verse ten. It says, and I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise. This is talking about Paul. This is talking about Paul. It says, uh, verse uh, 10, Acts chapter 20, 20, verse 10, it says, And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. Verse 11, And when I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of them, that were with me, I came into this, uh, Damascus. This is when, when the Lord blinded Paul. Verse 12, it says, In a nut, sorry, in one Ananias, a devout man, according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews that dwelt there. Mm-hmm. So he was had a, he was a, doubt, a devout man and had a good report. That's right. <laughs> Just like Cornelius. That's right. <laughs> you know? and, 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 and Cornelius, all right, was a Roman citizen. Mm-hmm. And Paul. Was yep. a Roman citizen. Yep. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Is but it... they knew that they were Israelites, mm-hmm. especially now. You know, now now they're getting. You know, Peter. You know, sent, uh, Cornelius for this particular chapter. Cornelius is now meeting Peter, and yo, know, his spirit is is it being strengthened. Like yo, yeah, yeah. you know, this is I'm being accepted in. Yeah. You know, like you know, what I'm saying like yeah. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Acts chapter ten and verse twenty three says, uh, "Then called he." Uh, it's like I'm reading again. It says, then mm-hmm. called he them in and lodged, uh, and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompany him. Mm-hmm. Verse 24. And on in the morrow, after they enter into Caesarea, uh, and Cornelius waited for them and had a call together his kinsmen and near friends. Mm-hmm. Verse 25. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshiped him. 
So, so he saw Peter and he bowed down to right. him because he knew that Peter was with the Lord. That's man. right. That's right. He was with Yahweh Shai, yeah, man. Was, like, this is yeah. the man that was yeah, with yeah, Yahweh yeah. Shai that I've been hearing all about. Yeah. You know? Yeah, man. Verse, uh, verse 26. But Peter took, took him up, saying, stand up. I myself also am a man. Right, Peter. That, there you go, yeah. man. All right. That's because the, 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 this is about Israel, man. He's just doing the work of Yahweh Shai, mm -hmm. you know? And, oh, I, you know... Um, I want to uh, bring you know an, uh, an example. Even even now, you know, we never seen the apostles. We only see them on on the computer. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee, if we met them in person, man. It'll be even more like wow, you know. Yeah. It's a different. It's a different. Uh, 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 like feeling, a yeah, feeling yeah. Like, man. You, like you see yeah. a celebrity. Yeah, you know, you but, know, like, you know, but. Because you reverenced them as in that. And, yeah. Right, I right. When, when we saw the elders and stuff like that. Right. You know, I was with elders as I won, elders mm -hmm. like I Nop and Elder Manatazak. Like, mm -hmm. You know, we see them, you're like, oh, right. Teacher, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's the same thing with um, Cornelius. He was like, yo, but, you know, of course, Peter's like, yo, you're an Israelite too. Like, yeah. get up. Like, you know, yeah. he know he already, he already understood. Like, you're an Israelite too. Like, this is about Israel. About our, right. It's about our nation, you know? That's what that happened with, uh, yep. with us with Elder Gad. Elder you know, Gad. about to salute him. Yeah, know? right. <laughs> he's like, put he's, your head up. He's man. like, put your head up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's uh, Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10 and verse um, uh, 26 says, but Peter took him up saying, stand up. I myself also am a man. Mm -hmm. Verse 27 says, and as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. Mm -hmm. Verse 28. And he said unto them, ye know how that it is unlawful. That is, it is an uh, unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto uh, one of another nation. Oh, one of another nation. Now you got these plantation Christians. Oh, it says another nation. Uh, yeah. Well, you don't know the history. Yeah. All right? Because, mm -hmm. hey, man, ever since King Solomon uh, died, the kingdom split into two. You had the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Yep. And the northern kingdom got taken out of the land mm -hmm. and they got scattered. And the bulk of them went to over here to, to, the, uh, to the New World. Mm -hmm. All right? And then you had um, the Hellenistic period. Mm -hmm. Or a lot of uh, Southern Kingdom, they ended up losing their their heritage from all these decrees. Yep. Okay, so you know you got to know the history and right and understand it. And in fact, when you go to another, let's let's bring that out because I I believe it's like Fubu, yeah, Fubu, Fubu or something. Fule. I said Fubu. I mean, <laughs> freaking clothing, Salakia. Uh, hold on. For us, bias. I think that's what Fubu stands for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like Acts history. chapter ten, verse twenty-eight. Let me get this. Bear with me one moment. Well, if you if you're up to, if you're at this point, you're you're um, sincere, <laughs> yeah. you know, <laughs> you're, uh, you know, wanting to get this understanding. Uh, Acts chapter ten verse twenty eight, and let's go to uh, to keep it the of another nation. And the compound. Yeah. Then I think you got to go to the compound, the root word. A flu. Oh, we don't know. Wait, you got the root word, which is foreign. And then you got another, another, and then you got Fule. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's called, Fule, which literally it says a tribe in the New Testament, mm -hmm. all the persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch Jacob. Jacob. Yeah. And you know what? That reminds me of Ezekiel 37. I gotta get that out. Well, finish finish off yeah, finish. The, that that verse, and then I'm gonna get Ezekiel okay, 37. Mm -hmm. This book of ten, this book of Acts chapter ten and verse twenty eight says, "And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto come unto one of another tribe. I mean, another nation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Yahweh have showed me." That I should not call any man coming or, or unclean. Right, right. Because, hey, all right, this is the time to bring all the tribes back, mm -hmm. all right, that believe in Yahweh Shai. That's the only way you're going to be saved. You yep. believe in Yahweh Shai. All right, now let me get Ezekiel chapter 37, and I'm going to start at uh, 21. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Power, behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, again, among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. 22. And I will make them one nation 
in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. That's Yahushai. And they shall be, here we go, no more two nations, mm -hmm. neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Yep. You see that? Okay? So that that uh, uh, that's what uh, Peter was talking about. Because he knew the history. Peter knew about... All right, the, the kingdom splitting, mm -hmm. all right, and uh, the northern kingdom being taken out, and then the Hellenistic period with southern kingdom. He knew all that history, man. Okay? Yep. Um, 23. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with the detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. For But I will save them out of all their dwelling places when they have sinned, and will cleanse them, so shall they be my people, and I will be their power. Yep. Here's the cleansing again. Yep. Okay. I'm like Israel. Israel. It's all about Israel. Man. I got a precept. Mm -hmm. This is book of Romans chapter 11 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. I say then, have the Most High cast away his people? Yahweh forbid, mm -hmm. for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. That's right. So the Lord have not, he did, well, verse 2, the Lord have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Want ye not what the scriptures say? Uh, say it in Isaiah, how that he make it intercession to the Most High against Israel, saying, mm -hmm. "Yeah." So, so Paul is basically he's saying he's a he's an Israelite from the tribe of um, he's from the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Mm -hmm. All right, he wasn't he wasn't from the tribe of Ju uh, Judah. He was from the tribe of Benjamin. So he's telling the Lord didn't cast away uh, the other tribes. He didn't cast away his people. You know, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Um, you know what? Jump down. We're just gonna we'll finish it off. We, we hit the nail on the head. Um, start at 34. Okay. This is the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. Stop here. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter Unless 10. Unless you got something else. No, that was it. Okay, okay. Acts chapter 10 and verse 34. It says, Then Peter opened his mouth. This is this is Peter going to teach Cornelius about Yahweh That's right. That's right. Acts chapter 10 and verse 34. It says, Then Peter opened his mouth. And said of a truth of a truth, I perceive that Yahweh is no respecter of persons. Oh man, you got to get act, uh, Exodus chapter two verse twenty five, uh, um, because what does that mean? The, the Most High is no respecter of persons. All right, for for who? All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got you. Mm -hmm. Exodus chapter two verse twenty five. Come, on, this is the book of Acts chapter. Uh, Exodus. Oh my man. <laughs> oh, you go, you go. Exodus two and verse. I started 24, Bible Kashat. Mm -hmm. Exodus 2 and 24 says, And Yahweh heard their groanings, and the power remember and Yahweh remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. Woo! Verse 25. And Yahweh looked upon the children of Israel, and Yahweh had respect unto them. Right. So the Lord only had respect unto the nation of Israel. All right. Mm -hmm. So when Paul, when 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 Peter was saying, excuse me. That he has no respecter uh, of persons, cause hey, if you believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, all right, then you hey, your 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 uh your sins are gonna be forgiven and you're gonna be delivered, mm -hmm. all right, cause you're an Israelite. Okay, that's the only one who the Lord has respect for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Acts chapter ten and verse um thirty four again. It says, then uh, Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive that Yahweh is no is no respecter of persons. Verse thirty five. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. There you go. That's an Israelite mm -hmm. of the elect. Okay? Because they're going to do exactly what's commanded by Yahweh Bashem al Shai. Yep. And our people were scattered through those nations. Mm -hmm. Verse 36. The word which Yahweh sent unto the children of Israel. There we go. Preaching peace by Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Uh, he is Lord of all. Right. That's a cut right there. That's a cut, man. That, I mean, that right there seals the deal. You know? You, you, you know, that's the thing with you plantation Christians. You know, you don't finish reading the chapter. Yeah. This is all about Israel and coming back and them coming back. And that's why Peter said to the words, God said unto the children of Israel, preach peace by Yahweh Shai Mashach. He is Lord of all. It's all about Israel, man. Yep. Okay? Yep. Hey, man, that... If unless you got something else, that was, it, yeah. that was it. Hey, so you know, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. Okay, Cornelius is an Israelite. Yeah. All right, he was just part of the Roman army. Okay, and um, most the Most High Yahweh Shimei Shai remembered uh, remembered him that because what was he doing? Praying. 
all right? He was mm -hmm. um, giving alms to the people, what people, the, the Jews, mm -hmm. all right? Because he believed. He heard about Yahweh Ya uh, Yahweh Shai. He heard about Yahweh Shai, what he did, mm -hmm. all right? And he believed. And and the Lord uh, heard his prayer and said, you know, I'm going to send Peter to really give you the, the, the full understanding of what Yahweh Shai did for us as a nation. That's right. All right? And that's why, hey, man, this truth is beautiful because once you understand that, you know, salvation is only for Israel, all right? That's it, man. Like, you just need to, all right, stay rooted in to this truth. That's and right. then you're going to be safe. Because the Lord ain't saving black people. The Lord ain't saving uh, Hispanic people. The Lord ain't saving Native Americans. He's saving Israelites. That's right. And you have to acknowledge that you're an Israelite. That's right. All right? Yeah. Unless you got something. Yeah, that was a, you know, Lord winning, Lord winning this lesson was uh, edifying to the elect, you know, that, like, the story of Cornelius is mm -hmm. as us, you know, mm -hmm. we waking up from that Gentile state and coming back to Yahweh Bashim Rasha, our, our true power, you know. Mm -hmm. So Lord winning this lesson was edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel. You know, we want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Rakakwadash. We want to give double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone, which rule well. And we want to give all peace, and greetings, and salutations to all the like Akim that's pushing his word in truth and sincerity. And Shalom. Shalom. And a Baba Ball. Baba Ball. Shalom. Shalom.